यमुना खीरावन चारी यमुन थेरावन चारी जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी गोपी जान बल्ला गिरी पर गोपी जान बल्ला गिरी पर यशोर नंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यशोर नंदन ब्रज जन रंजना या मुना तेरावन चारी यमुन थीरावन चारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे निताय गोर हरी बो हरी बो हरी बो निताय गोर हरी बो जाय जाय प्रभु पार प्रभु पार प्रभु पाजाय शिल प्रभु पार प्रेमानंदे ओम नमो भागवते वसुदेवा ओम न 
namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Narayanam namaskrityam Naram chaivanarotamam Daivim sarasatim vyasam Tato jayamudherayat Nasta praeshu fabadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 3, Text Number 23. Srimad Bhagavatam, Iranam Kandam, Mondram Adhyayam, Padam, 23. Iranam Kandam, Mondram Padam. Jivan, Jivan, Javo, Bhagavatangri, Bhagavatangri, Linam, Sa, Jatu, Mrityo, Bilabeta, Yastu, Sri Vishnu, Padya, Manujas, Tulashya, Swasan, Chavo, Yastu, Naveda Gandam, Jivan Chavo Bhagavat Hangri Renam, Najatu Mrityo Bilabeta Yastu, Shri Vishnu Padyon Manujas Talashya Swasanchavo Yastu Naveda Gandam Jivanchavo Bhagavatangri Renam Najatu Najatu Mrityo Bilabeta Yastu Shri Vishnu Padya Manu Jastalashya Swasanchavo Yastu Naveda Gandam Jivan Chavo Bhagavatam Kri Renam Najatu Mrityo Bilabeta Yastu Shri Vishnu Padya Manu Jastalashya Swasanchavo Yastu Naveda Gandam Anybody like to chant? Vishnu 
Jeevanchavo Bhagavata Andrireno Jeevanchavo Bhagavata Andrireno Achatu Mrityo Bilabetrayasto Achatu Mrityo Bilabetrayasto Sri Vishnu Padya Manujastu Lashya Sri Vishnu Padya Manujastu Lashya Vasanchavo Yastu Naveda Gandam Vasanchavo Yastu Naveda Gandam Any Madhijis would like to chant? Jivan, while living, Shava, a dead body, Bhagavata Angri Renam, the dust of the feet of a pure devotee, Na, never, Jatu, at any time, Mratmatya, Morto, Abila Beta, particularly received. Yeah, a person. Two, but three, with opulence. Bishop, Bishop, Bishopadya of the lotus feet of Vishnu. Manuja, a descendant of Manu, a man, Talashya, leaves of Talasi, Swasan, while breathing, Shava, still a dead body, Ya, who, to, but, na, Veda, never experienced, Gandam, the aroma. Translation, the person who has not at any time received the dust of the feet of the Lord's pure devotee upon his head is certainly a dead body, and the person who has never experienced the aroma of the talasi leaves from the lotus feet of the Lord is also a dead body, although breathing. You can all repeat. The person who has not at any time received the dust of the feet of the Lord's pure devotee upon his head is certainly a dead body. And the person who has never experienced the aroma of the talasi leaves from the lotus feet of the Lord 
is also a dead body, although breathing. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. According to Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, the breathing dead body is a ghost. When a man dies, he is called dead. But when he again appears in a subtle form, not visible to our present vision, and yet acts, such a dead body is called a ghost. Ghosts are always very bad elements, always creating a fearful situation for others. Similarly, the ghost-like non-devotees who have no respect for the pure devotees nor for the Vishnu deity in the temple create a fearful situation for the devotees at all times. The Lord never accepts any offering by any such impure ghosts. There is a common saying that one should first love the dog of the beloved before one shows any loving sentiments for the beloved. The stage of pure devotion is attained by sincerely serving a pure devotee of the Lord. The first condition of devotional service to the Lord is therefore to be a servant of a pure devotee. And this condition is fulfilled by the statement, reception of the dust of the lotus feet of a pure devotee who has also served another pure devotee. That is the way of pure disciplic succession or devotional parampara. Maharaj Rahugan inquired from the great saint Jadbarat as to how he had attained such a liberated stage of a Paramahamsa. And in answer, the great saint replied as follows, Rahuganai tapasanayati nirvapanagrehadva. Nachandasanaiva jalagni pune. Vina Mahat Padarajo Vishekam. O King Rahugan, the perfectional stage of devotional service or the Paramahamsa stage of life cannot be attained unless one is blessed by the dust of the feet of a great devotee. It is never attained by tapasya austerity, the Vedic worshipping process, acceptance of the renounced order of life, the discharge of the duties of householder life, the chanting of the Vedic hymns, or the performance of penances in the hot sun within cold water or before the blazing fire. In other words, Lord Sri Krishna is the property of his pure, unconditioned devotees. And as such, only the devotees can deliver Krishna to another devotee. Krishna is never obtainable directly. Lord Chaitanya therefore designated himself as Gopi Bhartu Pada Kamalayor Das Dasanudasa the most obedient servant of the servants of the Lord, who maintains the gopi damsels at Vrindavan. A pure devotee, therefore, never approaches the Lord directly, but tries to please the servant of the Lord's servants. And thus the Lord becomes pleased, and only then can the devotee relish the taste 
of the Talasi leaves stuck to his lotus feet. In the Brahma Samhita, it is said that the Lord is never to be found by becoming a great scholar of the Vedic literature, but he is very easily approachable through his pure devotees. In Vrindavan, all the pure devotees pray for the mercy of Srimati Radharani, the pleasure potency of Lord Krishna. Srimati Radharani is a tender-hearted feminine counterpart of the Supreme Whole, resembling the perfectional stage of the worldly feminine nature. Therefore, the mercy of Radharani is available very readily to the sincere devotees. And once she recommends such a devotee to Lord Krishna, the Lord at once accepts the devotee's admittance into his association. The conclusion is, therefore, that one should be more serious about seeking the mercy of the devotee than that of the Lord directly. And by one's doing so, by the good will of the devotee, the natural attraction for the service of the Lord will be revived. In the Iranda Matiayam, Iranda Kandam, Mondra Matiayam, Idavati Mondra Padati, Puri Pepul. Far over Bhagavani, two year Bakari, Pada Gadiulla, two Sigale, Kanadi, telling you the head to Kundaleo. Bhagavani, Purpada Gadi, Ulla, Purasi Gale, Narmanantari, Nugaramileo. Avar-Mulchi-Vittu-Kondi-Rindhanam-Iranda-Pinamadami-Kardam-Padu-Vah. <laughs> Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasa De Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare So we're hearing Shunakarishi address the sages in the Naimasharanya forest. Shona Karishi is the head of all the sages and he is the one chosen to put questions to Sutta Goswami. So in the course of him putting questions to Sutta Goswami, sometimes he will also speak his own feelings and he's expressing here in this section about the futility of those who have no taste to hear the message of the Supreme Lord. Sutta Goswami idam tamadhi kendikari samarpikyum adhele adhattiri he said, those who don't like to hear the message of the Supreme Lord, then their ear holes are compared to the holes of a snake. And those people who don't like to chant the glories of the Lord, who won't chant His holy name, then their tongue is like that of a frog. 
யார் ஒருவர் பகவானின் புனிதத்தை புனித நாமத்தை ஜெபிக்க விரும்பவில்லையோ அல்லது பகவானின் புகழை பாடவில்லையோ அவரது நாக்கு தமிழைய நாக்கிற்கு ஒப்பிடப்படுகின்றது These examples have been given by Shona Karishi. This is the one that Shona Karishi has been given by Shona Karishi. Holes of a snake. The snake enters the hole, eats the rat which is living in the hole. Pambu, Padakamaga, Pondukadi, Vasikyum, Yenikadi, Pudipadakku, Angi, Padayu. So the snake of death enters the ears of those who, who don't like to hear. But those who have a taste for hearing, they can have a long life. They can live a very long time hearing the glories of the Lord. Shonaka had described that for those who have no attraction to hear, then as the sun rises and sets, it reduces the duration of life. But for those who have a, an attraction for hearing the glories of the Lord, then there's no influence of time on them. And the tongue was described to be like that of a frog, because the frogs in the rainy season, we will hear the croaking of the frogs, and that croaking of the frog will simply bring snakes which will devour the frog. So in this way people waste their valuable human life. One's head may be decorated with a very nice turban. But if that head will not bow before the Lord, then that head is just simply a heavy burden. And if the legs are not used to walk to the holy places and to go to the temples and see the deities, then those legs are compared to the trunks of a tree. We were walking in the botanical garden this morning and we saw the trees. Their roots are stuck there in the ground. They're not moving anywhere. So in, in the same way, if people don't use their legs to walk to the holy places and to go and see the, the deities in the temple, then their legs are useless. They're not serving the real purpose of life. In this way, Shona Karishi is describing how the different limbs of the body and the different faculties, facility, uh, activities of the body, they're all meant to be used for the service of the Lord. 
So in the verse today, he is mentioned about the importance of getting the blessing, taking the dust from the feet of the devotees. And if we don't get the dust from the feet of the devotee, then our bodies are compared to like a dead body. And we're told dead body means ghost body, ghostly haunted. So the importance of getting the dust, it's not simply the, the physical thing that you come and touch someone's feet. That's not the, the process. But taking the dust from the feet of the pure devotee means taking their mercy, hearing their words and following their instructions. Sometimes Srila Prabhupada would, would have, he would tell the devotees, nobody should touch my feet. Does it mean Prabhupada didn't want to give any of the devotees pure devotion? No, of course Prabhupada wanted to give his mercy to the devotees, but he knew it's not just touching my feet which is important. What is important is to hear their words and follow their instructions. Sometimes uh, people would come to touch the feet of Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada. He would ask them, do you think you have a right to touch feet? He questioned them, what makes you think you have the right to come and touch the feet? So in the Vaishnava tradition, it is not the culture to come and touch the feet. But the culture is to show respect to the devotee. To hear their teachings carefully and to follow their instructions. And to engage in their service. That, that is the real mercy of the devotee. One time, Srila Prabhupada said, rather than touching my feet, he said, better you bring me my slippers. <laughs> 
to come and touch their feet, that is just simply troublesome. But if you bring the slippers for Prabhupada, that is something practical, that is practical service. So, in the purport, Srila Prabhupada is explaining to us how it's very important to approach Lord Krishna through the devotee. We want to get devotion. We get devotion from one who is devotee. Now, why don't we get it from Lord Krishna Himself? Lord Krishna does not give devotional service so freely. In the nectar of devotion, Srila Prabhupada explains that if Lord Krishna gives devotion to people, then he becomes controlled by them. Krishna becomes the chariot driver for Arjuna because Arjuna is his pure devotee. So Lord Krishna was obliged to become his chariot driver. And similarly, Lord Krishna became a messenger on behalf of Maharaj Yudhisthira. He brought the message to Dhritarashtra, requesting Dhritarashtra that we should settle up without going to war. Let's not have the battle of Kurukshetra. Let's settle everything peacefully. Of, of course, at that time, uh, Dhritarashtra's son, Duryodhan, he heard the message and he was adamant. He totally refused. No, we have to have war. And Durya don't even try to arrest Krishna, Lord Krishna at that time. And and it, and it was then that Lord Krishna revealed a, a universal form and Duryodhana, of course, understood he couldn't capture Krishna in that way. But this shows us how Krishna is so much obliged to his devotees that he becomes their servant, he becomes controlled by them. And because of Mother Yashoda's love for him, Lord Krishna was bound up by Mother Yashoda. So Krishna rarely gives pure devotion. It's rarely achieved. But the pure devotees are more merciful than Krishna and they give pure devotion. <laughs> 
ஆனால் தூய பக்தர்கள் கிருஷ்ண பகவானை விட அருகிவிக்கவர்கள் என்பதனால் அவர்களால் தூய பக்தியை கொடுக்க முடியும் we want to get bhakti we have to get it from someone who has bhakti to give us namakku bhakti theva endral yaar oruvendum bhakti irikkindrado avargalidirundhu dhaan pettu kolla mudiyum so we have to find out that devotee who is willing to give us devotion who is willing to bring us to krishna ivaru dhaan namakku bhaktiyai koduthe krishna bhagavanidam nammai alaithi chellakoodiya oru bhaktarai naam In the purport, Srila Prabhupada quotes the famous verse spoken by Maharaj Rahugan, oh, spoken by Jatbarat rather, when he was questioned by Maharaj Rahugan. Maharaj Rahugan asked Jatbarat, "Where did you get all this devotion from?" In the in the part that he put it on the board, Maharaj Rahugan. Maharaj Rahugan was a king and he was being carried in a palanquin and he was going to visit some holy place. And while he was on the way, one of the palanquin carriers was injured. and he had to replace him he needed a new another person to help carry the palanquin and he saw jatbarat and he thought mo well, he has a strong body he looks like he could do the job maharaja raghunandan or samayam pulida talathirkku pallaikai chendru kondirundha appozhudhu pallaikai thooki chendravargal oru varukku kaayam yerpattathu appozhudhu அவருக்கு பதிலாக மற்றொருவரை நியமிக்க பார்த்த பொழுது மகாராஜர் ஜடபரதரை கண்டார் அவர் மிகவும் உறுதியான உடல்வாக கொண்டிருந்ததனால் பண்ணைக்கு தூங்குவதற்கு இவர் உகந்தவர் என்று மகாராஜர் நினைத்தார் So Jad Bharat was playing the part of a foolish person and he, he, you know he didn't speak anything he didn't say anything he pretended he was just dumb and he thought he was just some foolish person he was dressed in ragged clothes and his hair was disheveled and so maharaj rahugan thought yeah let him carry my palanquin he can help to carry it he can be one of the carriers janapada mega elimiyaga oru oomaiyai pol nadandu kondadanal maharaja raghunandan avare pallathu thuduvatharkku But when Jad Bharat was carrying the palanquin, he was very careful not to walk on top of any insects which were moving on the path, and he was carrying the palanquin in a in a rocky manner. So the king became very disturbed. You are from the Indian country, Jad Bharat. Tamadu Padam, in the Puchigal Viranagalayam. So the king got angry at him and began to shout and began to threaten to have him beaten. And when Jad Bharat heard the king speak like this, then Jad Bharat began to speak philosophically and revealed that he was a greatly enlightened personality. If I am a sir, can you hear the basic of this? Jad Bharat, or the unknown one, but the two year old that is in the game, are the same as the other day. So, are you with that? So, you we have to understand that. we don't know always who is actually the enlightened person it's not that they have to be a sanyasi in monk's robes to be enlightened the one could be in any position in society and they may be the most advanced transcendentalist ivaraga yaar unmayil 
தன்னுணர்வு பெற்ற பக்தர் என்பதை நம்மால் எளிதாக கணிக்க முடியாது அவர் ஓர் காவி குடைந்த உடை அணிந்த சன்னியாசியாக இருக்கலாம் அல்லது சாதாரணமாக இருக்கலாம் நிச்சயமாக வெளித்தோற்றத்தை பார்த்து நாம் அவர்களை எடை போட்டுவிட முடியாது அவர்களை ஒருவர் தன்னுணர்வு பெற்ற தூய பக்தராக இருக்கலாம் சோ மகாராஜ் ரகு கான் question jad barat where did he get all of this philosophy from how did he know all of these things he, because he was talking in such a philosophical manner that maharaj rahugan was amazed he thought he's so elevated so enlightened so he asked him who taught you all of this where did you get all this jad baratani இந்த தத்துவங்களை எல்லாம் கேட்ட மகாராஜன் பிரதுகணன் உனக்கு இந்த தத்துவம் எல்லாம் எப்படி தெரியும் இதையெல்லாம் நீ யாரிடமிருந்து கற்றுக்கொண்டாய் என்று ஆச்சரியத்துடன் கேட்டார் சோ தென் ஜட் பராத் மேட் ஹிஸ் ரிப்ளை he said i didn't get it by simply studying the vedas or by doing great austerities or by doing a lot of charity i i didn't get it by simply being a good householder or by being a good sanyasi but the only way which we can get this kind of devotion this this knowledge this understanding is only possible by the mercy of a devotee ala devi nadavadar pagalitha vedangalai payilvadalo யாகங்கள் செய்வதாலும் தானம் தவம் புரிவதாலும் மற்றமற்ற தத்துவங்களை படிப்பதனாலும் இந்த ஞானத்தை ஒருவர் பெற முடியாது நிச்சயமாக தூய பக்தர்களுக்கு சேவை செய்வதன் மூலமாகவே இந்த ஞானத்தை பெற முடியும் என்று குறிப்பிட்டார் So this is made in the fifth canto this point is made in the fifth canto and the same point is made again in the seventh canto in relation to Prahlad Maharaj who was asked the same thing by his father Harani Kashipu Idu aindam kaadathil ulla kadai idhe pondra kadai yelam kaadathil varugindrathu idhe kelviye dhaan Hiranya Kashipu thanudaiya bhakta pudalvan Prahlad's father wanted his son to be a good demon and he was trying to have his son educated to be a good demon to deal with his enemies. Hiranyakashipu thanad magan Prahladan or saranda asuranaga varagendamendru virumbi asura kalviyai avarukku bodithar But Prahlad said to his father, Oh father, nobody is your enemy. We are all the same. We should see everyone equally. We shouldn't make distinction, friend and enemy. Just see everyone, everyone's the spirit soul. Just see everyone equally. அவருக்கு <laughs> you want to go you should go and live in the forest it's the only thing which can save you pragaladan avaruye thandaikke neengal oru kinatril veendu vitta murugathirkku samamaga irukkindirgal ivatra ella vittu vittu neengal kaatirkku sendru tannunaru thara vendum endru avar upadesitha and Prahlad's father asked him what was the best thing you learned from your teachers and Prahlad replied Shravanam Kirtan Vishnu Hiranyakashipu unnudaiya guru kulathil aasirgalidam nee enna kattukondai endru ketta Anand Prahladan Shravanam Kirtanam 
And when Hiranyakashipu heard that, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. And Hiranyakashipu just became livid. He became so angry at Prahlad. And so he wanted to kill Prahlad, but before he tried to kill Prahlad, he asked him, where did you get this from? Who, who gave you all of this? But Prahlad Maharaj told the same thing, that the only way you can get this devotion for Vishnu is from a devotee. We have to get the blessings of the devotees. And the blessings of the devotees mean taking, doing service for the devotees. We take up service in the Krishna Consciousness Movement and help to do some service for this Krishna Consciousness Movement. Making nice temples for the te for people to come and observe different functions and festivals. And installing deities and showing people how to worship the deity. One of the devotees was telling me how they had a deity of Krishna in their home, but they were never very sure exactly how to worship. But when they started to come to the temple here, then they saw everything, how to offer arti and what you should do for the pleasure of the deity. And so everyone who is engaged in the Krishna Consciousness Movement they are all considered to be pure devotees. Because the pure devotee means they are not doing any sinful activity. And they are chanting the holy name of Krishna and engaging in the service of Krishna. And this way, through this Krishna consciousness movement, we are connected to Srila Prabhupada. And Srila Prabhupada, the pure devotee who is connecting us to Krishna. And Sonakarishi mentions also about the tosi leaves which are offered to the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. The four Kumaras entered to the spiritual world and their entrance was blocked by giant Vijay. And at that time, Lord Padmanabha came there, along with the goddess of fortune, to meet the four Kumaras. Kumaras, 
Now the four Kumaras were Brahmagyanis. They were attracted to the impersonal Brahman. They had heard about the feature of the Lord as Bhagavan, but they were not so much inclined. They were more attracted to the impersonal Brahman. Now the four Kumaras are sons of Lord Brahma. And Lord Brahma is the pure devotee. He's the head of our Sampradaya. So he told the Kumaras about the Lord, about his Bhagavan feature, but somehow they were more drawn to the impersonal Brahman. But then Lord Padmanabha came there and just from the aroma of the tosi leaves mixed with saffron from his lotus feet, it entered the nostrils of the four Kumaras and they experienced a change in their body and in their mind. Srimad Bhagavatam said, Tashyara Vinda Nayanasya Tapadara Vinde Kanjauka Mishra Makarandavayu. Like that, Srimad Bhagavatam is describing how that aroma of the tosi leaves was so potent that it entered the nostrils of the four Kumaras and they gave up their attraction to the impersonal Brahman and they became devotees of the Lord. So, of course, it, here we, we have also the, the lotus feet of the Lord and so the Pujari, Makunda Prabhu, the priest here who is also temple president here, he can place the lotus feet of the Lord on your head and you can at that time also take tosi leaves which have been offered to the lotus feet of the so this way Shonaka Rishi is encouraging all of us to take advantage of these activities. He is describing the, 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 futi the hopelessness of people who don't do these things. They're described to be like dead bodies. They don't. They're described as ghosts. So we don't want to be in that condition. We don't want to be ghostly haunted. We don't want to be dead. We want to awaken full life. So by taking the tosi leaves offered to the lotus feet of the Lord, that we we get the mercy of Krishna, the mercy of his devotees. Bhagavani Tamari Padangari Parikapata Pulasi Yetu Balvadar, 
பகவானின் தருணையும் அதோடு பக்தர்களின் தருணையையும் நம்மால் பெற முடியும் ஷோனகரிஷி இஸ் டெலிங் அஸ் வாட் வி ஷுட் பி வி ஷுட் பி வேர் ஆஃப் இஃப் வி டோன்ட் டூ தீஸ் திங்ஸ் தென் வி ஆர் மிஸ்ஸிங் அ கிரேட் ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டி ஷோனகரிஷி இங்கே குறிப்பிடுகின்றார் இதையெல்லாம் நாம் பின்பற்றாவிட்டால் மாபெரும் பாக்கியங்களை எல்லாம் நாம் நிச்சயமாக எழுதி விடுவோம் All right so we will stop here and ask if there's any question ipporthu ye naam eduthukindrom edhavathu kelvigal irukindrava or any comments from some of the devotees and the devs patrigal kelvirudhu edhavathu karuthugal uh huh is it in relation to this yeah okay Wait. மாதாஜி அவர்களின் கேள்வி சற்று முன்பு இந்த பக்தி நடவடிக்கைகளில் ஈடுபடாதவர்களுடைய ஆயுள் குறைந்துவிடும் என்று கூறினீர்கள் ஆயுள் ஒருவரது கர்ம நிலையை பொறுத்தது என்று பரவலாக கருதப்படுகின்றது அப்படி இருக்கும் பொழுது எப்படி இந்த கூற்றோடு இதனை நியாயப்படுத்தி கூற முடியும் Well, the point is that if one is not engaged in chanting and then hearing the glories of the Lord, then one must be engaged in material fruitive activities, karmic activities. And the nature of the karma will be that it reduces the duration of life in the body. One way, if you want to be able to do it, you will be able to do it. பலநோக்கு செயல்களில் ஈடுபட்டு கர்ம காரியங்களிலே ஈடுபடுவார்கள் நிச்சயமாக இப்படிப்பட்ட காரியங்கள் ஒருவரது ஆயுளை குறைத்துவிடும் As the sun rises and sets it's mounting the wheel of time so the wheel of time is reducing the duration of life of each and every living entity but if we have taken to the devotional service process then we're no longer under the influence of the material nature suryan udithu marayum poludhe kaala chakram surandru kondirukkindrathu nichayamaga indha bhakti thondil nam eedupadavittal nichayamaga namadhu aayil koraithukondudan varum The same point is made there in the Sri Ishopanishad. It's mentioned first of all about the Ishyavasha principle that we should recognize everything is the property of the Lord and just take only what is our quota and don't take more. Idhe kolle Sri Ishopanishadilum Ishyavasya kollayil kurippadapadirundathu. Oruva தனக்கு தேவையானதை மட்டும் ஏற்றுக்கொள்ள வேண்டும் மற்றவற்றை ஏற்றுக்கொள்ள கூடாது and then the issue punishes said one can live for hundreds of years if he goes on doing work in that way இவர் ஒரு செயல்பட்டால் 100 வருடங்கள் வாழ முடியும் என்று இந்த ஈசா ராசி கொள்கை குறிப்பிடுகிறது so when we act on the devotional platform recognizing the lord as the proprietor you no longer under the control of the material nature you are parikapattava ellame bhagavanudaiya udaimai endra nilayil oruvar irukkum bodhu nichayamaga inda yerkayil nammal nimma amidiyaga vaalamudiyum if we surrender to krishna then we are under the spiritual energy krishna bhagavanidam nam saranadi irukkum bodhu 
and that will protect us from the effects of the material nature which is to diminish the duration of life. Yeah. Okay. And yes, Yuvati Sachi, what's your question? Does the mercy of a pure devotee always come unworthy? Always what? Or always come unworthy? Or uh, does it depend on our uh, efforts? Oh. Does comes it itself, comes itself or our own effort? Oh. Well, there is such a thing as Kripa Siddha, that just by mercy you can become perfect. Kripa Siddha and Rekolge in Kil in the Karunai Tamagave Varvadum Kundu. Kripa Siddha is like getting an honorary degree from the university. All right, did anybody of you, any of you people get honorary degrees? We have many PhDs, many scholars from good universities, good students, you know. Did you get honorary degree? Not very common. Very rare. So Kripa Siddha is like that. There is such a thing as Kripa Mercy, but it's very, very rare. So you want to get the mercy of the devotees? You have to desire it. You have to endeavor for it. So we do sadhana, we do our spiritual practice, we chant every day and we study the scriptures and we do service and in this way we attract the mercy of the devotee. So it's not just sit back and wait for the mercy. You have to desire the mercy. By desire, you, you will do, show your desire by your sincere efforts in performing service. In the As Srila Prabhupada would come to the temple, he would want to know how many devotees have you made? He would want to know how many books have you distributed? How many properties have you acquired? In this way he could understand how much we are desiring the mercy of the devotee. 
இதிலிருந்து எவ்வளவு இந்த அளவிற்கு நாம் இந்த கருணையை பெற விரும்புகின்றோம் என்பதை அவர் காண விரும்புவார் so this is how you can please prabhupa ipadi naan naam sila prabhupadai prithi padutha mudi make the votis distribute books and acquire properties bhakta kai uruvaaka vendum putta kai yogam seiya vendum sothu kai kolmudal seiya vendum make some nice temples for krishna krishna bhagavan kaaga alagana and in this way you get more mercy from krishna you bar krishna bhagavan nidrindu namakku meru karunai kedaikum to mau krishna goswami was giving class one time in hong kong and i remember devotee asked how to get the mercy oru samayam tamal krishna goswami maharaj avargal hong kong nagari vaguppu koduthu kondirundar So Tamal Krishna Maharaj said, "You put all your money in that box there." <laughs> you get mercy. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada ki, yeah. Shri Mad Bhagavatam ki, yeah. Gaur Bhakti Vrinda ki, yeah. Hare Krishna. जय हिस्वागिनाथ भक्तिविनंदा नरसिंह कुशुमाराज की जय